you doing? I missed you all. Where have you been? Working? Working hard every day? So, um, how many of you heard that we've been awarded top workplace for the 10th year in a row? Oh, good. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. How many of you have heard about phase four? A few. Okay. How many don't know what the heck I'm talking about? That's why we're having this meeting. Great. The good news is that we're not going to have to park off-site for any of you. Yes. I wanted to get together and talk a little bit about all the things that we have to be thankful for. We are, honestly, if not the best, one of the best senior living communities in the United States. How many of you believe that? By applause. Right. I agree with you. And, and who makes us that way? Yes. All of you. That's right. That's exactly right. All of us working together really make Westminster what it is. So we have a lot of things to be thankful for, a lot of things to show gratitude about. Um, and we have a lot of accolades and awards that we won this year. I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, the biggest thing that we accomplished in this last few months, we need more chairs. How many of you have joined Westminster in the last year? Stand up. Stand up. Let's give them a round of applause, everybody. So when we brought the Carlisle on, and an additional dining room and a new building, we needed to bring on about 70 full-time employees, and we did that successfully. More than that, we finished the Carlisle, and Jordan, our marketing director yesterday, told me that we sold our last apartment in the Carlisle just yesterday. Very cool. Our assisted living, our new assisted living is full. Our memory care is filling up, and everything is going great. Great job to all of us. While I get all of us together, I always have to use the opportunity to talk about hospitality and do a little training on extraordinary impressions. Has everybody in this room heard about extraordinary impressions and hospitality? Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Great. Everybody in the room. Don't you feel sometimes that we're like an island onto ourselves that one of the only places that you can find hospitality anymore? Courteous respect for one another. You go around town and you just don't see that anymore. Um, so thank you for keeping that up. Westminster scores really high in our resident satisfaction and hospitality and the way that you treat each other with courteous respect and our residents with courteous respect. That really helps us achieve those things. Hospitality is really about the way we make people feel. It's much more than customer service. Customer service is, is just transactional, right? You go to Walmart, you get a gallon of milk, you put it on the conveyor belt, sometimes you're ringing yourself up. But if you are lucky enough to get a cashier, you give them the money and they give you the milk. And that's about it. And you might get, thanks. Most of the time, you don't even get that. So we really want to keep hospitality in the forefront of our thoughts. We want to be cordial and generous in our treatment of others without reward, right? Kindness shown in welcoming others and personalization. We want to be kind to one another. Treat each other with courteous respect. Not just what we do for you, but how we make you feel. And I hope that all those <coughs> folks that have stood up, that have joined us in the last year, feel like they've had a great welcome at Westminster. Yes? Yeah. Great. So we have a bunch of hospitality promises. We greet you warmly, by name, and with a smile. It's not too much to ask, is it? We treat everyone with courteous respect. That's my favorite, right? We anticipate your needs and act accordingly. We listen and respond enthusiastically in a timely manner, even if it's 10 times that that resident has to go to the bathroom today. 
We still have to respond enthusiastically, right? It's not their fault, most of the time. We hold ourselves and one another accountable. We make you feel important. And this is not true in all senior living communities. Sometimes the residents feel ignored, but our focus is making them feel important, right? We embrace and value our differences. Look at this room. We are truly different, and all of our differences have value. We all have different skill sets. But all together, working together towards a common goal, we create an exceptional and extraordinary place for our residents and ourselves to work. We ask, is there anything else I can do for you? So I used to work in healthcare, right? And one of the things that we do is ask residents this before we leave their room. Because if you don't ask them this, what happens is as soon as you leave the room, you get to the nurse's station to breathe for a minute, they push their call light button again, and then you get to go all the way back. We maintain high levels of professionalism both in appearance and in conduct. We pay attention to the details. We'll be working over the next few weeks to make sure this place looks tip top every day. You're working to make sure that this place looks tip top. You're submitting work orders or plan ops team. We're working on work orders. We're touching up paint. We're working on everything you can possibly think of to make this place look great. Food and beverage are producing dishes that impress. They're they're awing our residents and their visitors that they come to visit um, and check us out. And all of that is partly due to you and your focus on the details. So in 2023, we did an exercise <clears throat> where the board and leadership got together in this room and worked on uh, our strategic plan for the next 10 years, right? So our, our last strategic plan was a three-phase plan, um, actually a four-phase plan, but we're about to enter into to that now. But we want to work on the next 10 years. We don't want to just rest on our laurels, but what's next for Westminster? So we created a new mission and vision statement we're going to, over the next couple of weeks, be, actually we've already started the community condition assessment, so that's where we look at the mechanicals and all the buildings, um, all the systems, and, and make sure that we're top notch, right? We also are working on an IT condition assessment, so checking out our Wi-Fi, our infrastructure to make sure that we have everything we need to succeed in the future. And we're looking for ways to improve our associate amenities. You like that? So our new mission statement, enriching lives through inspired experiences. Our new vision statement, we are dedicated to providing a nurturing, purposeful, connected, and abundant life for all we serve. All we serve. So the board and I and leadership believe that we serve more than just our residents. Who else do we serve? All of you, right? So our purpose, our existence as a community is dedicated to providing a nurturing, purposeful, connected, and abundant life for you as well as our residents. Our core values, you could expect this if you work with me in healthcare for any amount of time, resident-centered care always, right? Community operation with inclusion and integrity, people first, dedicated and engaged and associates, which we absolutely have, financial stewardship, innovation, and nurturing culture, environmentally conscious, so we're trying to recycle as much as we throw away. We try to, our solar project on the roof of all three buildings, we're trying to produce our own electricity and help the grid. Um, all of the things that we're doing to reduce our utility usage. Guiding principles, we provide hospitality and first class services in a secure, warm, and inviting community. We provide premier health care that promotes and encourages independence, physical, social, spiritual intellectual growth while treating everyone with dignity and respect we communicate well and often we find unique ways to bring joy to our residents and associates we consider the impact of our actions on the world and we do our best to make the world a better place who believes that i do we seek and adopt innovative solutions we act honestly with ourselves and others So when you're working here at Westminster and you're thinking about the job that you do every day 
and the work that you do. You probably don't think about much how often you're actually inspiring others to do a better job. I didn't lie to you when I said Westminster is one of the best senior living communities in the country. It really is. And we have the metrics to show you that prove that. And we do this every year. This is not the first year that we've achieved top workplace. We continue to achieve this because of you and all the accolades that we have. I want to show you just a minute what some of the healthcare metrics are for our community compared to others in the industry, right? <clears throat> so we have a lot to celebrate. How many of you have ever been to a nursing home? Come on, raise your hands high so I know. Everybody in this room just about? How many have been in a nursing home that you had a bad experience? Or the place was really disappointing? I have. We're not that way. And we're not that way for a reason. Um, just recently, I sent out an email to everybody. We received word that we have been identified with, as an award for U.S. News and World Report for best nursing home um, in 23 and 24. You can't get that easily. Only 16% of the country achieved that award in either long-term care or short-term rehabilitation. 16% of the nursing homes across the country. And, and out of those, not many achieved both, but we did. So let's give a big hand to our healthcare team for doing this. Not only that, we achieved five star rating from CMS for the last 15 years, which is incredible. Nobody in Texas has done that. And I asked the Division of Health and Senior Services to tell me that. So our numbers that are discharged back to the hospital, so if you come here for rehabilitation, um, our number for returning back to the hospital is 0%. The industry average is 13.76. It's a really, really great achievement. Dish absolutely in clap. Go ahead, Monica. <laughs> So the discharge destination to the community, only 66% of people that come here discharge back to their community homes. And the industry average, the national average, is less than 30%. Treatment time per day, so you get, you're going to get more treatment time here, more rehabilitation time with therapists here than you will in the nation on average. And our functional scores, when you leave here, are 5.16 as opposed to 4.51 as a national average. And your length of stay is less than the national average. So not only are you going to come here, you're going to have great food, great rehabilitation. You're not going to have to stay here as long as you would someplace else. And chances are you're going to go back home. That's a great place to live. So this is directly from CMS just to show you that you can look this up for yourselves. If you don't believe that we're five star, it's right there in front of you. And you can compare us to every community in Austin, you're gonna see that we're one of the few five star rated communities and we're the only five star rated community for the last 15 years. So great job everyone, and it's really everyone. So and. In 2022, we did a resident experience survey. We'll be doing this again in 24. And the industry average for people that would, residents that would recommend their community is 84%. Westminster scored a 96%. Place to live, 86%. Westminster scored a 93%. Hospitality, and this is something that we work really hard on. 82% think that their community are great hospitality. We're at 97%. That's awesome. Assisted living, 86% overall approval rating. We're at 93%. And healthcare, the industry average is 82%, and we're at 96. And I So 2023 has been another great year, and thanks to you, we've achieved these things. And this is so far, the year's not over, right? 
Best Nursing Home Honor Roll, U.S. News, J.D. Power Award for Senior Living the fourth year, Best Independent Living and Assisted Living, and we're working on this survey right now for 24. Uh, we achieved our occupancy for the Carlisle, and uh, on time and on budget, five-star rated again, six times we were inspected by the state, and all six times we had zero deficiencies for infection control. Absolutely. And the Westminster Assisted Living was finally approved for licensure, the new building. Um, we received a permanent CO. It was right around Valentine's Day, and we moved everybody in about three, four days. Um, Communitas Leadership Award, Triple B Positive Fitch Rating. We achieved, and I forgot about that, honestly. Um, Arbor Skilled Nursing won the Harrison Award for Quality, and we got our liquor license which you don't care about, but the residents like that a lot. We also had a grand opening celebration for the Carlisle. We received the AIR Award for Assisted Living Quality, a Mature Media Bronze Award for the 2022 Annual Report, Live Your Best Life. We received the Gold Safety Award from LCS. Let's get some more chairs out, would you folks? There's chairs right here in the front. So in June 2023, you took an associate survey and you gave us great marks and we really appreciate that. How many of you took the survey? Yeah, I guess that 20% didn't raise their hand, but next time you will, right? You'll do the survey next time? Promise? Yes, okay. So 78% was awesome though. The industry average is around 47%, so you, get, you did a, an incredible job of that. And our engagement st score was 81%, which is awesome, and we achieved top workplace. And we were going to have a gift for you today, but all we have is cookies. <laughs> we're, you know, you're going to get one of these two things, not the people. <laughs> But the jacket. The jacket should be here tomorrow. We'll probably hand them out early next week. Don't get attached to the people in the jacket. Not the people, just the jacket. Okay? It's a nice jacket, real lightweight, very comfortable, and it'll be great swag for you to wear all fall and winter long. And it should be here tomorrow, but we'll pass them out early next week at the latest. And I apologize. We actually started the process of ordering this back in August, so they should be here, but I think Amazon's having a rough time right now. So. Um, during the Top Workplace Award, we received exceptional marks in these things. Culture of excellence, employee well-being, employee appreciation, and professional development. And so let's give ourselves a big round of applause for you. All right, so let's talk about our Alzheimer's Texas fundraising. Where's the committee for Alzheimer's Texas fundraising? Stand up, don't be ashamed, be proud, come on. There we go. That's not all of you. You all raised $238,000 this year for Alzheimer's Texas. Thank you all for your support and helping us do that. Um, we're top Texas Alzheimer's Texas fundraiser and also top Alzheimer's fundraising in the LCS portfolio, which is 150 communities across the United States, and we blew them out of the water, folks. There wasn't even like, nobody was close to where we were, so congratulations on that. And 100% sold in the Carlisle as of yesterday. Another round. All right. Coming soon, how many know about the new associate space being built right now? Ooh, that rumor mill is pretty good. Not too bad at all. I wanted it to be a surprise. So we're creating a new associate space in what used to be the assisted living in the Windsor. And when, when we moved the assisted living to the Carlisle, our intent was to go back to the common spaces and make a, a wonderful associate space and that's what we're working on. So this associate space is going to have a new cafeteria, a fitness gym, 
an education room, new locker room with showers, a lounge with a library, and a game room, and it's going to be centrally located on our campus. And we're working on it right now. So we, have, we hope to have it finished by the end of this year. Hopefully we'll open it maybe the end of December, early January at the latest, and we're excited about this space. Speaking of new spaces, some of you have heard about Phase 4, but not a lot of you. So let me tell you a little bit about Phase 4. When we started this construction project, there was actually three phases. The first phase was the Windsor expansion, which we completed. And then we were going to, and that new common space that was added with all the fitness areas and everything. And then Phase 2 was construction of the Carlisle which was completed. We all remember the day that we got to park in the parking garage for the first time. Brought a tear to my eye. Um, and then third phase was Windsor, right? We converted the lobby downstairs, the admin offices, the second floor administration. We refurbished, rehabilitated the first floor to make it a rehabilitation space. And all that's been completed. Now phase four is where we want to go back to the Preston and do some work on it because it's 56 years old and we could make some better connections so we're going to do that we're going to add some amenity space to it um, and a better connection between the Preston and the Windsor and also A and B wing because it's a long way for the residents to walk um, to get into the Windsor and it's really inconvenient too so we're going to work on that um, this is a rendering of a new coffee shop that's going to be created and it's also going to have an enclosed we're going to enclose that sidewalk that runs along the front of marketing the coffee shop is on the first floor we're also going to gate the majority of the campus on the east side um, and i had them remove the gate for this um, rendering but we're also providing a space to bring in food trucks so we can still have p terry's and the um, ice cream people come in and do all of that for us on our kickoff parties and things so we're going to continue to do that stuff this space is going to be added in the preston courtyard so if you're facing north coming out of the preston lobby this is a conservatory that's going to be built in that space it's going to be a two-story conservatory that's going to help the residents enjoy the outdoors without being outdoors it'll be an air-conditioned space and it'll go up two stories and then there'll be a deck above it on the third floor that residents can go out and enjoy. And then on the west courtyard, we're going to install a new generator that will supply power for the entire Preston building. We're also going to install a new generator for the Windsor building. Um, both of these generators will be capable of providing power for the entire building, every system, um, for up to seven days or more. So if we lose power and we have another snow bid, We'll be prepared. You can come here and stay with us. We'll be all right. Okay. We're going to put a little fireplace in there to hide the generator and a little dog park to the left of it because the dog park we have is not quite big enough. Um, this is a view from the top. So the Preston Courtyard is right there. This is the conservatory. That's the West Courtyard. We're not touching the front of the building. And this is a view of some of the changes. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to open up the Preston lobby into the dining room. And the dining room is going to be moved back a little bit. So we're going to, because the residents really like liquor, we're going to provide them another location to get liquor in the Laurel. We're going to add a bar there, cocktail lounge, that will open up into the lobby. So it'll kind of create a grand entrance for them. Um, then we're going to push the dining room back, move the private dining room up here, and then these, there's some apartments here that will be taken out. They've already been taken out of inventory, but that will become part of the dining room. The dining room will move. We're also going to build a new corridor that wraps around it all, and there will be vestibules installed on every entrance into the Preston lobby. So you know how, Betsy, you're really cold? In the winter time, when the north wind is blowing into the lobby, there'll be a vestibule that'll slow the wind down. So another set of doors. So that's good news. Um, 
let's show you some more here. As you come past the dining room, we're going to build some multi-purpose space and activity space on that wing. So these will be new spaces for us to have meetings in, um, like this, or resident meetings. Also activity space where we can do display cooking and residents can do crafts and things like that. And we're going to move Ruth out of the ground floor, the garden level, or some people call it the basement, and move her up into this new space. Kicking and screaming likely, but we'll get her there eventually. Right, Ruth? Um, first floor plan. So this is a connection. So we're cleaning up the connection to the Windsor and we're adding the coffee shop right here. So it has a view of the new courtyard that we're creating on the east side and also it'll have walls that can open up and we can have an indoor and outdoor activity going on at the same time if we want to. So it's really a neat space. There'll be a barista there. Um, coffee, some danishes, and things like that. And then we're going to create a new salon, which is bigger than the salon we currently have. And we'll repurpose the salon space that we currently have into more of a fitness studio, more fitness studio space. And then that's that corridor in front of marketing I was talking about. So the second floor is the conservatory. You can see it. And then we're going to add a library because the residents right now are in this library and they say it's a little too small. So we're going to double the size of their library with this new space. This is going to be dedicated to music and you can see the corridor connecting A and B wing there. Then we go up to three. This is third floor and this is it. Right, only three, only three stories, so we're not building anything huge. But this is three, the third floor. You can see that there is a deck above the conservatory, so more outdoor space. There'll also be some raised planters here for residents to plant their little gardens. Um, you can see that the connection, the corridor, is maintained. There is additional space being built here. This is Harris Bell Hall. This is where we're at right now. And this additional space will be a receiving area. So sometimes, like I'm looking at this room right now, it's really packed. If we had another 100 people trying to get in here, it'd be pretty rough. We really need a receiving area around that elevator so that we can set up tables and people can sign in for marketing events when you have 300 or so that you want to have. Um, so that's the plan there. We are touching some of those apartments with the corridor. Um, and then we're also, so we're building a ramp that runs along these spaces. We're adding some storage because you noticed the uh, EVS guys, I bet you noticed that uh, the chair storage is gone in this. So yeah. <laughs> so we're adding some more storage um, for this stuff. And then we're going to add a, um, a simulator. So a golf game simulator for the residents to use and hopefully we can share it with them once in a while. And then this is a new club room space that's going to have pickleball, I'm sorry, ping pong, uh, billiards, and uh, air hockey. That club room space overlooks, it'll be all glass wall right here, and it overlooks new pickleball that we're going to put on the roof because we don't have any ground left. We have to put stuff on the roof now. So none of the space generates any new revenue for us, but it does position Westminster well for the next 50 years. And that's what it's really all about. And it really brings some connectivity to the Preston and improves the quality of life for the residents we serve and provides us and you more spaces to program, right? Because you're fantastic and resident activities and um, games and all the things that they enjoy. So that's phase four. We expect that phase four will begin January of 2025. So we have a year to rest. Not really, because you're always busy doing stuff. But we have a year to rest from construction to some degree. And then we'll start this project. We expect the project to take 
12 to 14 months. And there will be a lot of logistics that we'll be planning over the next several months. Um, so we're going to have to move a few residents for temporary stays. Some resident apartments are going to be lost. Um, the Laurel dining room will shut down for a period of time. So we'll likely extend the hours of the Rowan. Um, actually, does anybody remember Harris Bell Hall being a dining room at one time? How many of you remember that? I remember. Back in 2010, that was good times. So we, we've done a lot of this before. I have confidence that we'll do it again and do it well. Um, so what do you think? Good? Yeah. Black applause. So I wanted to remind everyone that we are collecting donations for Blue Santa. You may see the boxes in the lobby. I invite you all to donate um, unwrapped toys for ages 1 to 2 and 8 to 14 because that's the, the most needed if you're able to do that. <coughs> mark your calendars. Do you have your calendars? Get your phones out. Mark your calendars for the tree lighting. How many of you have been to a tree lighting before here at Westminster? That's awesome, I'm telling you. If you haven't been, you should. Um, it's on December 1st, 5.30 to 7 p.m. It's very cool. Um, resident gift. How many of you like resident gift? Oh, yeah, that's an awesome day. Uh, December 12th, 2 p.m. to 2.30. And all associate holiday lunch, December the 14th. How many of you like an all associate lunch? I love it. Um, December 14th, 11.30 to 2.30, right here in this room. And I look forward to seeing you all there. And our isn't this cool? The Grinch. Annual tree lighting party. I wonder who the Grinch will be. And our award ceremony, because I'm sure a lot of you are going to get awards. So uh, February 22nd, it's not too early to put that in your calendar. And I thank you all very much. And thank you for everything you do every day. And have a very happy Thanksgiving. And I'll see you soon.